Hello everyone, my name is Varun. Today we are going to discuss how to install certificate on F5 LTM. So before we proceed with the installation of the certificate, let's have some introduction to the SSL. So SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. It's a standard technology for keeping our internet connection secure and safeguarding any sensitive data that is being sent between two systems. So what SSL does is, Whenever you connect to the any website and you share the credential or any other information, it encrypts the data while sending it to the server and server decrypts it so that no one can read the data in between. If we talk about HTTPS, HTTPS is a com combination of HTTP with SSL. While HTTP use clear text data, whereas HTTPS use SSL to encrypt the data before sending to the server. Now, if we talk about SSL processing by F5, there are three ways by which F5 process the SSL. First is SSL pass-through, in which F5 will only load balance at TCP level and SSL ends on the server. So there will not, there will not be any decryption of the uh, traffic on the F5 and no certificate will be installed on the F5 all the certificate and the decryption is taken care by the backend server so with SSL pass through there is no need to add any client SSL or server SSL profile in the virtual server you cannot optimize the layer 7 traffic and cookie persistence cannot be used now if we talk about SSL offloading SSL offloading offload the server from decrypting the SSL traffic so in this case the decryption of the traffic and the certificate installation will be done on the on the F5 and there is no need to install the certificate on the backend server and whereas in this case the traffic between the client and the F5 is encrypted and the traffic between the F5 and the backend server is in clear text you only need to install a client SSL profile in the virtual server this by SSL offloading, you can optimize the layer 7 traffic and use cookie persistence. It provides a centralized management of certificates. Now, third one is SSL bridging. In SSL bridging, certificate is installed on both F5 and the backend server. And both the traffic is encrypted, a session between client and the F5, as well as the session between F5 and the uh, backend servers are encrypted. So there are two separate SSL sessions. In this case, you have to create a client SSL as well as the server SSL profile and layer 7 optimization is available along with the cookie persistence. Now, if we talk about the steps of installing a certificate on a virtual server, you have to first generate a CSR. Either you can generate a CSR using any third party tool or you can generate a CSR by F from in a F5 itself. You need to submit the CSR to a CA. So CSR stands for a certificate signing request, which is uh, submitted to the CA. Then CA signed the CSR and provide a certificate. Then that certificate is added to the F5 by going to the system certificate management. So certi in, under certificate management, you add all the certificates. Then uh, you create a client SSL profile uh, in case of SSL offloading. You only need a client SSL profile and you call that certificate under the client SSL profile and then you call that client SSL profile onto the virtual server. Now before we proceed with the uh, practical, let's discuss how this SSL encryption happens. So let's say you have one client which is communicating to a server lab.com. You, you, you create a CSR for lab.com. When you create a CSR, you generate a private key as well as the public key. Pardon me for my writing. So you generate a private as well as the public key. So whenever you you, you send the CSR to the uh, CA, it contains the public key, which is signed by the CA. So whenever a client initiate a uh, session with the server, server sends the certificate to the client. So if this is a well-known CA certificate then client trusts the certificate and gets the public key of the server. And whenever client send any data to the server, 
it encrypts the data using the public key which it obtained via certificate and whenever a server receives the data it decrypt that particular encrypted traffic using the its private key so this is how uh, you know encrypted uh, traffic is sent in between the client and the server so let's now move on to the practical so for now we have one virtual server already configured that is web server ip is 192.168.110.10 so so as of now it is listening at port 443 but it doesn't have the certificate installed so if i try to access this this virtual server without the certificate installed at port 443 it will not work so if, if i try it I think it's in the cache. Let me clear the cache. Oh, I can try a different browser. So, as of now, if we go to this web server. We have configured it to listen at service port 443, but it doesn't has any client SSL profile associated. So, so this profile, uh, this server is listening at 44, uh, port 443, but it doesn't have any client SSL profile. So if we try to access the server, we will not be able to access it as it doesn't have the certificate installed, right? Though if I convert it to listen at port 80 then it will work by stdb now if i try to simply access it by stdb HTTPS will not fork, I will use HTTP. So it will work, but the communication is not secure as it is not encrypted. So in order to for HTTPS to work, we have to install a certificate first. And, and we have to first uh, add a certificate, create a client SSL profile and add it here. So for doing that, we have to first generate a CSR. So I go, go to system, certificate management, traffic certificate management, SSL certificate list. From here, uh, we can generate a CSR. So we go to create. Either you can generate a self-signed certificate or you can create a CSR. So for generating a CSR, you have to uh, select certificate authority. Let's call this CSR as web server. Okay, now I will be using a common name as webserver2.lab.com. It requires a common name. It requires the organization name, locality, state, province. So once I hit finish, it will generate a CSR. So now I have the CSR. Either you can download the CSR or you can copy paste it. So I'll provide, I'll just send the CSR to a CA. So here we have a dummy CA that is get assert. So I'll paste the CSR to I'll paste the CSR to CA and the CA will provide me a certificate. So as soon as I submit the CSR, I got the certificate. Then I download it. So now I have the certificate. So first I generated a CSR. I have given that CSR to the CA and CA provided me the certificate. Now if I go to this to my repository. So as of now, I have a RSA key along with CSR. So as I told you, as soon as we create a CSR, it creates a private key along with a CSR. CSR contains the public key and this is the private key which remains with the F5 and we provided CSR to the CA and CA signed that CSR. So now if I go to this, 
I have I, I haven't imported certificate as of now so I have one key here this is the private key and this is a CSR which we have given to the CA now let's import the certificate that we received from CA so we go to the import now we have to browse that certificate so uh, so this is the certificate now we import it now we have three things rss certificate that we have received from the ca we have the private key along with the csr that we created now we have to create a client ssl profile where we will call uh, the certificate so we have to go to the local traffic under this we have to go to the uh, profiles then ssl we create a client ssl profile we are only creating client ssl profile as we are using ssl offloading so we create a client ssl profile let's name it as web server okay now we have to add the call the certificate here so we go to the certificate keychain and we call that certificate that is uh, web server and the key is also web server and if you also have a root certificate of that ca then you can add that root certificate under the chain and if this certificate is uh, is you know is uh, and get with a passcode or key you have to enter that passphrase here as we are not using as we are not using any known ca so we are not going to import any root ca root uh, certificate here as well as our key is not encrypted our ca, CA is not and uh, certificate is not uh, you know encrypted with a key so there is no need of a key here so we add it now hit finish so now what we have we what we have done till now we created a CSR get a uh, signed certificate from the authority added that sign certificate on the load balancer created a client SSL profile now the last step is to go to the virtual server and call that SSL profile so now this is our virtual server So now as we have the certificate now so we'll add it we'll ask uh, we'll add the port 443 as a service port here so the server will be listening at port 443 we add the client ssl profile here so we created web server we add it here and then update it is updating now we have the virtual server ready now we'll try to access it again previously we were not able to access it using HTTPS now we'll try again see now it has received a certificate but as the certificate is not known by any uh, like it's not a known it's not issued by a known certificate authority so it's giving us an uh, you know a warning that it's the connection is not private so we have to accept this we said proceed to the website now we are able to access it access it using ssl and we can also see the certificate information here So this is the certificate which is issued by GetAssert and this is our common name that we have used. I hope you like this video. If you find this video helpful then please like it and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.